Good morning. I'm here in the backyard getting slightly snowed on by what looks like styrofoam beads. <laughs> it's a really pleasant type of snowfall. I've been quite sick for about well, about a month actually, about four weeks. Sinus uh, um, uh, one congestion, but what is it? I had to take antibiotics. So um, anyway, I've been feeling much better. I'm on a personal, uh, I guess, regime of uh, I, I eat garlic every day and a bunch of spices that that are helpful for keeping things like that at bay. And it, I feel like it helps, but this has a, been a bad, uh, I think I've had three or four <laughs> probably different things all kind of overlapping each other. But uh, anyway, I'm feeling much better now. Uh, for, for the past few days, I've actually been planting trees. Um, if you've watched our channel for any amount of time, you know that every, every springtime we plant sticks in the ground and we've had a pretty good success rate with the trees growing from those sticks. In fact, all the trees in our front yard, uh, and that's quite a ways away um, on the other side of the house there, but you can see some little, um, little thickets of trees back there. But all of our trees, which are now, you know, 15, 20, some of them 30 feet high, all began with little like two and three foot sticks, like literally single sticks um, from from living trees and we just go out in the springtime and cut them and uh, <clears throat> stick them in the ground and and as long as we mulch around them they they seem to do pretty well so <coughs> so what's really cool I think is now um, you know five to seven years after some of those first sticks were planted um, those those sticks are now much much larger um, or I should say we're, the the cuttings that we're taking off of those are much much larger than the sticks that we started from, which to me is is really cool. Um, so typically, every year since we started, I've been um, taking off little branches um, because I was kind of under the impression, and I still kind of am, but I'm experimenting. It's kind of under the impression that the smaller the stick, the better chance it'll have to to send down roots and not have to have a lot of um, upper upper growth to contend with. In other words, when it starts to dry out in July and August, um, if it's not if it doesn't have a good root system established, these little sticks will usually die. <clears throat> and and that that problem is exacerbated um, the larger the tree is because it, and it has um, a large amount of growth and evaporation to contend with, and and not a strong enough root system, but. So um, a couple things that we've that we're going to try this year. Uh, first of all, we've we've paid for uh, a local tree trimmer to to deliver many many truckloads of of chopped up wood to our property. And actually, as soon as I pay him, he'll he'll come and, and bring more. It worked out a great deal. Um, I'm basically paying for gas, just fifteen dollars a load, which uh, hopefully he's making a little bit of money on that, but. Um, he, he's trying to get rid of it. He doesn't have a big enough place to even keep all this stuff that he, that he gets. Um, but it benefits us quite a bit and, and benefits him too. So anyway, you can see around here, you might have caught a couple glimpses of, of quite larger trees. Uh, let's see if we can get the, you can kind of see how big that one is there. That one is maybe 12 feet tall. So these are much larger than the two and three foot sticks that, that we've been planting in the past. <clears throat> But here we are on the back, back of our property line here. So this is our fence line and uh, the neighbor's field behind us. Uh, but so my priority here is to is to make just a a line of trees, and I've got them going the other way too. And this is a very small portion of our property, just the part that's that's directly behind our house. So. <clears throat> this actually, it's interesting, it kind of, this size of property compares uh, a little bit to 
the properties that both Laura Jean and I grew up on. I grew up on an acre and it's probably, my property was probably about this wide, about as wide as ours is. Um, and I haven't measured it. I'm just going to guess it's maybe 250 feet uh, wide, <coughs> maybe 300. And same, same with Laura Jean. Uh, she grew up on, I think, a little bit more than an acre, maybe about an acre. Um, so, so if we were to just take care of this part and just kind of like subdue this part, um, you know, we would be sort of reliving our childhoods, or the, the way that we grew up on a little bit of acreage, uh, plenty of room to roam and a lot of, a lot of room to explore. And we've tried to subdue it in the past, but um, we've had um, large rodents to contend with. Uh, they're not actually that large. They're just like large mice. They're called voles. And they're pretty prevalent around this, this part of Idaho. And uh, they, they like to come down to, to little young trees and nip all around the <clears throat> the bark and they they very quickly kill the the plant um, as you can see here's one oh, let's see you can kind of see I, I painted this white just right before autumn time or, or I should say right before winter time uh, just in an effort to to deter them a little bit they can see that they've nipped around that and uh, this tree will most likely die. And, and that's about the size that we've been putting in. Um, <coughs> but we have had success nonetheless. The voles don't get all of them and sometimes uh, by the second season the, the little sticks have, have put forth enough roots in the ground that they'll, they'll come up again from the ground. And we can sometimes get them to live. Um, but if we put in bigger sticks like this one that we did last year so this, is, this has been a very uh, slow process of um, experimenting with different sizes. So you can see very clearly that Vol's got that one. You can even see little teeth marks. It's like a little miniature beaver got it. And then if you go around to this other side, amazingly, they didn't get this side. There you go. So they nipped around probably two thirds of that this little willow. So I've put, put rocks around this just to prevent, I mean, now that winter's over, um, the voles are probably not gonna uh, go for these, these trees. Now they have plenty of, plenty of grass and, you know, little green plants starting to come up everywhere that'll feed them. So they're not, they're not as attracted to these, but this, this little willow will probably survive. Um, but the plant has to send up all of its nutrients through this little leftover portion of the bark and this other part will, um, you know, is not helping, this other side is not helping to, to transport nutrients and, and water up to the, to the living uh, aerial parts. But anyway, I, I have high hopes for that one. But what we did here is instead of putting little sticks in like this, we put in a, a, a little cutting of a much larger branch. This year, I've gone with much, much larger pieces. Um, several of which are 15 or 20 feet high. Uh, this one, for example, you know, just a, just a branch, but this one by comparison is, you know, I can um, just about reach my, my fingers around that. I don't know what the caliper size is that, of that, but maybe an inch and three quarters from one side to the other. Um, the voles will certainly kill that just as easily as they, as they can the tiny branches, but I have <clears throat> some hopes that this will do better. Now, the only way, though, to keep this um, from drying out, though, is, as I mentioned earlier, is to mulch it um, heavily. And I, I've done done the one the one part of that process, uh, or one part of, of helping that, is to dig a deep hole. We have a high water table, and it stays pretty high even in the summertime. Um, I've dug down to about three feet, and about an hour after I dig these three foot holes, um, they're full, about, full of about two and a half feet of water. 
so that's how high the water table is right now. Uh, luckily our house is about five or six feet higher than I am standing right here, which isn't a lot, but that's, that's plenty of room to keep it out of the, you know, out of the actual water table. And of course we don't have a basement, but, um, um, well, let's see here. Let me show you. I've started to just, I mean, done a measly amount of work, just, just putting a little bit of bark around this. And this is what you don't want to do. I mean, that, that is not nearly enough. What I really need to do is put probably, I would say at least eight feet. Um, well, at least, I'll, I'll say at least five feet. Uh, more is, is certainly better. I'm gonna go for about eight feet. And I don't wanna just put a little bit of, of mulch around this. And it could be dead straw, it could be whatever. But I like this because it tends to uh, deter the the rodents a little bit more, um, uh, particularly in the in the winter when the snow falls and it provides a um, a protection to the voles where they can burrow under it. Um, when there's bark around it rather than grass, it does tend to um, to melt melt off a little a little bit quicker, which means that the um, the cats and uh, hawks and things can get the get the voles before the voles get the trees. But anyway, I I want to put that, that, that shredded, shredded wood um, around these things in a, and not only a wide, but a very thick, um, thick layer. And when you mulch, you don't want to necessarily put it right against the, the tree. It can touch it, but you don't want to pile up um, inches right around the, the base of the tree down there, but kind of taper it so it gets, it's, it's lower there and it gets higher out here. This one's a little bit lower, so it's, a little... anyway. Um, so I wanna go, my goal will be, you know, six to eight inches at least on that stuff. And I've got plenty, plenty of material. I just need to uh, divide my time between <coughs> my job <laughs> and taking care of the plants. So <laughs> it's, you know, right now I, of course, I. As I said, I've been sick, and so I'm behind on, on work and getting paintings sent out to galleries, uh, which definitely is not a good thing. And then that coincides right when <laughs> the weather warms up and I want to be outside doing, doing this stuff, because it's uh, just as much, I get so much satisfaction from, from this type of work. I love being outside so much. So I guess I need to just be careful how I spend my time <laughs> now that the outdoors is calling me all the time. It's funny how, how easily uh, your favorite thing in the world um, can become, well, it's still my favorite thing to do. I'd much rather do that than anything for work, uh, painting, I mean. But where it used to be my my escape from daily life, now now it is my daily life, <laughs> and so I had to come up with with gardening and and planting, taking care of property as my as my escape from that. But uh, anyway, so that's what I'm gonna go do. I go into the studio here. Here's Laura Jean and Annalise. Hi, baby girl. Love you. She just woke up. <laughs> and Banjo and Emmy are over there too. And I um, have been uh, making frames and varnishing paintings. So this is a painting that I finally got framed and I still need to put the hanging wires on the back, but it's a painting I, I've been working on for several years off and on. And it's finally got to a point where I'm happy with it. You can see how cold it was outside. My glasses are all fogged up. It's moist out there and then, or, sorry, rather dry and cold out there and then warm and moist indoors. So my glasses always fog up when I come in, indoors. Anyway, I came up with this 
uh, this color and design as a good good solution for this painting. Because that's such a big painting that if I were to frame it with my typical frames that are more like this, you know, big and thick, wide, it actually is um, so large that it it costs about $475 to ship that, that painting. Um, but if I make it a little bit skinnier like that, then it, uh, it's a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. It's still expensive, but, but it's a lot cheaper than that. So here's another one that I framed the same way. And I got a tip from a friend that I can just um, put beeswax finish on it. It goes on more or less liquid and then I wipe it off and, and polish it. I think it looks really nice. Here's the, here's the third one. And then I've got a couple paintings on the easel. The, I finished that one uh, quicker than I thought and wanted to make a companion piece for it. So that's what I'm gonna be working on soon. A couple people have mentioned that they wanted to see my, my animal pieces a little bit more up close. These ones are four by four feet. And even though they're, they're pretty different from what I usually do, I'm, I'm really happy with them. I, if I had a big enough house, I'd love to put them around and, and you know, really decorate with them. Because I really am fond of that style. And the subjects. Here's an elk on its side that I haven't, haven't been able to quite finish yet. And you've seen these, uh, at least glimpses of them. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna work on in a minute. I'm just gonna put the framing or the uh, hanging hardware on them and then uh, get them shipped off to, these ones are going to South Carolina. So very, very hopeful that uh, this, relationship with a new, with a new gallery um, out there is gonna gonna work out for for us and for the gallery of course because it's a partnership but uh yeah anyway uh, so uh, there's so much more I could show you and talk about but I think I'll keep it uh, keep it limited to just a, a main subject here um, it's funny uh, no, I won't even talk about that. That's bringing up another subject. Uh, gotta keep it keep it to a minimum. Okay. Anyway, I will try to try to keep you posted a little bit more on things as they progress um, in and out of the house and with the family. <coughs> lots to talk about. Lot to share with you. Um, lots of good news things have happened and lots of progress. And uh, gonna be getting full swing into gardening here shortly. And Banjo has some exciting news, and we just heard from Lizzie, who is out preaching the preaching the gospel to people in Washington State right now. So we get get got to talk to her a little bit already today, and we get to talk to her more every Wednesday. We get to talk to her; it's really fun. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll talk to you again really soon. Okay. Uh, I'll try to try not to make it so long. I'll try not to get sick again. <laughs> That's really what it is. I hope I don't. That was pretty bad. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye.